Hello, my name is Tracy Allen and I want to welcome you to Cooking with Some Friends. Hello and welcome to Cooking with Some Friends. Uh, I'm getting ready to go out to a celebration we have going on and so I'm going to make a couple of pies and show you the process. Um, I realized that we had shared the flaky pie crust recipe before but that was several videos ago so I'm going to share it in this one again um, or you can look back I guess on the other one if you would like to but um, I'm actually doubling the recipe. So I've doubled the amount of flour I have in my bowl to two cups. Um, I'm also going to double the amount of salt that I stir into that. And then I'm going to mix the salt and the flour together just to get it well combined. And then I have two cups of Crisco that I'm going to cut into that. This is the pre-measured Crisco. And in the background, you can see I'm getting ready to show you a couple of pies. So the first one we're going to do is a fresh raspberry pie. Um, and the raspberries came out of our garden. Uh, so I'm going to cut that shortening in with my pastry blender. Just like I told you before, if you don't have a pastry blender, you could use a fork to do the same thing to work that in. Just don't try to mix it in because the cutting process is what gives you your flakiness to your pie crust. So you want to work that in with your pastry blender until it's crumbly or there's no pieces that are bigger than a pea. Okay. I doubled because I'm going to do the fresh raspberry pie, um, but then I'm going to do a pie that uh, we had when we were on vacation to the North Shores at Betty's Pies. We tried um, a couple of new pies and one of those was a bumbleberry pie. So um, that's one of them. I'm going to show you how to make. Okay, so once I have that cut in, then I'm going to add the water that goes in this and doubled would make it a cup of water. To that cup of water though, I added a couple of teaspoons of vinegar, which will help with the crust sticking together, but it also helps with the flakiness as well. And the colder your water, the better your dough works up or handles. And again, you don't want to over stir because you don't want it to be tough. So I put half of it in. I'm going to put the other half in. If you feel more secure separating this when you're once you've got the flour worked in into two or four equal sized portions, just so you know that you're getting the right uh, amount for two bottom crusts and two top crusts, then you can do that, or you can just eyeball it. Um, but again, the fewer times that you roll the dough, the better the dough is. So um, try not to overwork it. Okay, now this is ready. Get some of the flour out of my way. To roll out my silicone pastry mat. And I told you before on the other video, if you don't have one of these mats, um, it's okay. You can use a pastry cloth, which is just a sackcloth, and flour that well. You can use, you can just flour your countertop, it's just harder to clean up. Um, or you can even use um, a piece of wax paper or parchment paper that you flour, but put a damp towel underneath that to hold it in place. Okay, so um, the silicone mats say you don't have to flour them, but you really do if you don't want it to stick. I'm going to take about a fourth of my dough and form that into a ball. Put a 
flour on it so I know it's not going to stick. So now we're just going to roll it till it's just larger than the pie plate that you're going to use. And I'm going to use deep dish pie plates because um, these are pretty juicy pies and you don't want that to overflow into your oven. I sometimes even put a um, cookie sheet under it just to catch any of that. Okay, then like I showed you before, we're gonna fold that in half, bring your pie plate to it, slide your thumbs under, put your pie shell in the edges, unfold, and fit it to your plate without stretching it too much. And you don't have to worry if it doesn't quite go on this crust because you're gonna have your filling. You just wanna make sure there are no holes for that to seep through. You're gonna have your filling in there and then you're gonna put your top crust and combine those two edges. Okay, so we're preparing our pie crust. We have our bottom crust in the pie plate. Um, I, you don't have to worry too much that it doesn't fit exactly uh, because you're gonna put your filling in and you're gonna cover that with the top crust. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get my filling ready um, to go for this fresh raspberry pie. And for that, I have to let it set for a little bit, so I wanna get that going before I finish up the, the pie shelves. I have, excuse me, um, I have five cups of raspberries from our garden that I'm going to put in. And to that, I'm going to mix in um, one and a third cups of sugar. And I have some instant tapioca. This is gonna act as part of our thickener. I have two tablespoons. And I also have some cornstarch that I'm gonna add in uh, another two tablespoons. Get that out of there. So I wanna gently mix these up. And then I wanna leave this to sit for about 15 minutes. So those juices combine with the thickener and those berries and the sugar come together. So there they are combined for now. I'm gonna set that aside. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my bottom crust for my second pie. Make sure it's good and floured. Roll it gently, the size that I want it, just larger than the pie plate. Gently fold it in half, pie plate to it. Set it in a little over half, unfold it. And then this is ready for our bumbleberry pie filling to go into. Okay, so we've prepared our uh, flaky pie crust. We've got the two bottom crusts going for the two pies I'm gonna show you today. Um, the fresh raspberry pie, which I've got the filling started and it's over there. Um, and then I'm gonna show you the filling for the bumbleberry pie as well before we start combining these. Now, each one of these has to sit in the tapioca cornstarch mixture um, for about 15 minutes to get it, uh, to start reacting with the tapioca and um, the starches. So. Um, in the bumbleberry, though, it's really a combination of four fruits. I made a triple berry pie and did the video, but this is actually a combination of four fruits, and um, it can have different combinations. Uh, we even saw where they used um, some apple in a bumbleberry pie as well as one of the fruits. Um, and then you could also do a Great Lakes pie, which we, we saw when we were also on our vacation this summer, which is um, these four fruits that we're gonna use plus rhubarb. Um, but our family's not big rhubarb, aren't big rhubarb fans, so we're gonna go stay with the bumbleberry pie. So 
The fruits we're gonna combine, we have a cup of the raspberries out of our garden, so fresh raspberries. We have a cup of blueberries. We have a cup of strawberries that I've cut up. And then the fourth fruit we're gonna use are blackberries. And to that, we're gonna mix the sugar and it calls for a cup of sugar. And we're gonna mix the three tablespoons of cornstarch and the two tablespoons of instant tapioca. Let's see if I can not get my shirt in that. And we're gonna mix those together so that we can let them set for our 15 minutes before we add it to our pie shell. So really, these are pretty simple pies. They are much easier, fruit pies are usually much easier than cream pies. And this has a really good combination of the, the four different berries that you use. Okay, so I'm gonna set that one aside. Uh, while that's working, I'm going to go ahead and roll out my top crust for my raspberry pie. My oven's preheating to 350. don't want that sticking to our surface. And we're gonna roll that out just bigger than our pie plate, just like we did our bottom pie crust. If you have extra pie crust, you could turn that into like tarts, mini pies, or you can just put them on a, it on a cookie sheet with some cinnamon sugar and bake that. Don't want to go to waste. Okay, we're ready for our pie filling when it's ready for us. So we're back to make the rest of our uh, two berry pies that we're doing. The fresh raspberry pie is ready to go in the bottom pie shell. Top shell's already rolled for us. The bumbleberry pie filling is still setting for that 15 minutes to get the juices combined with the tapioca. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our fresh raspberry filling in our pie shell. to take a tablespoon of butter and just dot the top of the berries. Then okay. just like I did the bottom crust, I'm gonna fold this gently in half. My pie plate over. Lift it on, unfold it, and then I'm ready. If I have a lot of extra, I can cut some of that away. And I can reserve this to bake it if I want to. I don't want to cut too close to the plate because I'm still going to need to fold them under to seal. So then you want to fold the two crusts together, the bottom and the top. Flute it all the way around. Now I've already preheated my oven, but I've also put a cookie sheet in there to catch any juices if they overflow so they don't mess up my oven, burn on the bottom. So in the background too, I've got another salad going that I'm gonna make a video of here in a minute, but for right now, we're gonna finish up the pies. So then any two puffs, any two crust, can't say it, pie, you need to vent it so the bottom crust doesn't become soggy. So you can draw your 
pretty much anything in it, I always seem to do the same thing. And then I've got a little bit of sugar I reserved over here that I like to sprinkle on top. I don't normally do an egg wash. Um, you can do that if you like to, but I just like to sweeten up the crust a little bit with some sugar. And then this one's ready to go in the oven. So our bumbleberry filling has been sitting. It is the one that had um, a cup of strawberries, a cup of blueberries, a cup of raspberries, and a cup of blackberries. And sometimes I use just, or I would use just a little bit more, just depending on the size of your berries, to make sure you have a full crust. Just don't go crazy. Um, we put our sugar, the cornstarch, and the tapioca in there, and then we let it set for about 15 minutes to get those juices combined. Now I'm going to put it in that pie shell that we prepared. And our fresh raspberry pie is already in the oven, baking at 350, and it'll take it about just under an hour. It'll be bubbly and the crust will be golden brown. And this one will take just a little longer than that, um, 60 to 70 minutes. So um, with this one, instead of that tablespoon of butter, we're gonna dot it with two to three tablespoons. top pie shell on. Now we're going to do just like we did the other ones. We'll gently fold that in half our pie with the filling over to it, slide our thumbs under, put the shell a little over halfway, unfold it, and then if you have a lot of extra, you can go ahead and cut that away, or you can make it a thicker crust, however you wanna do it, but we're gonna fold those to seal it, and flute it all the way around. Sometimes think the pie shell is my favorite part when I eat the pie. Um, both these pies are great, warm with ice cream, although you're gonna wanna let this one cool a while um, before you serve it, and then if you wanna rewarm it to have it with that ice cream. Okay, just like the other one, we wanna vent the top of this so that our crust doesn't become soggy. And we want to dot it with some sugar. And you could use an egg wash on this one as well. And then that one's ready to go in the oven. Thanks for joining us for this session of Cooking with Some Friends. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And find us on Facebook at Cooking with Some Friends.